get a number six with extra dip. I'll have two number nines, a number nine large, a number six with extra dip, a number seven, two number 45s, one with cheese, and a large soap. I've re-recorded this video a ton of times because I'm really trying to perfectly gather my thoughts of how horrible the Grand Theft Auto trilogy is. I still can't figure out in words. I feel insulted. I feel kind of spat upon. I feel just completely disillusioned. There are a ton of design choices that I'm still fathoming why Rockstar decided to do this and pretty much upon the original version of the original Grand Theft Autos. It makes no sense. To be doing so, we're going to be comparing it to the original Grand Theft Autos on the PS2, so you guys have a broader and better perspective of what you're going to be getting with this version, which is nothing. The goal of the trilogy is to bring Grand Theft Auto 3, San Andreas, and Vice City onto newer and modern hardware, consoles, and PC. So if you have something that plays games, that's what's going to be doing. Boasting new features, as well as new lighting, new game mechanics, as well as other features. I think it's a very cool thing that they are trying to remaster this game, but the way they did it is actually pretty disgusting. <laughs> The UI for starters is going to be the first thing you're going to be seeing and you're going to be noticing that in all three titles they all have a uniform look but with a slight variation that attributes to their original look. So Vice City is going to have the whole palm tree aesthetic with uh, the 80s vibe. San Andreas is going to be more attributed to the people in Ganton. And I feel like the UI just does the bare minimum by helping you navigate through it but font choices just look extremely horrible and very cheap. They did away with the beautiful stylistic menus of the original PS2s in favor for something that looks completely inferior and strips away any kind of style that Grand Theft Auto oozes. It really doesn't help that in whatever version you're playing, you're going to be hearing the Grand Theft Auto San Andreas, you know, menu toggle, and it's just completely throwing me off since I'm so used to hearing, you know, Vice City with it and Grand Theft Auto 3. It, it just absolutely takes me off of the entire experience. I want you to keep this in mind. Rockstar was very, very particular with how they showed their trailers. They only showed two, and the two trailers that were shown only showed the cutscenes of the game and not the gameplay. There's a very specific reason they did that, and that was to hide the flaws of the gameplay. But starting with the cutscenes, since that's the first thing you're going to be seeing, you're going to be noticing that Rockstar took the original cinematic perspective of the PS2, which is currently in 16 by 9 and stretched that to fill your whole screen. Now, in the cinematic view, you're going to notice that the top and bottom is going to be cropped. So due to that reason, you're going to be noticing that certain characters aren't going to be framed properly in the middle, or they're going to be kind of deviating from where they're usually supposed to be. It's not really that big a deal, but you can tell that something is a little bit up. And I will admit that maybe even on the PC ports of the original Grand Theft Autos, you might be getting that to a certain degree but you really do see something like that when you see these two side by side. Doing away with the original lighting, Rockstar decided to implement Bloom into this one. And I will admit, for certain scenes, I think it does work more particularly for Vice City. When you're kind of zooming along some of the boardwalks and the peaks, you really do see how beautiful the lighting just bounces off your car and even some characters, but that's probably the only positive I will say. What Rockstar has done ineffectively is removed any filters, any fog, or any kind of atmosphere that gives Grand Theft Auto its, you know, visual presentation. So let's take a look at, let's say, Grand Theft Auto 3 opening. I think it does an exemplary job of displaying all the effects and ways that Grand Theft Auto look, and each Grand Theft Auto is different. With 3, however, it uses a bluish and green tone to kind of give it its feel. Adding with the fog and a little bit of motion blur does add a little bit to its art style and its perspective. True, these were used in order to mask limitations of the console, but it was implemented in a way that was completely integrated into the art style and direction of the game. When you completely remove all of that, you're left with something that doesn't even resemble the original game. And that's done through all three games. Each game I feel has a, a certain style to it and it completely removes each one. So they all look the same. In the intro for Grand Theft Auto 3, I really liked how nice and feathery some of the rain particles look, 
But with the new one, they just decided to retexture it and just call it a day. And it's just completely distracting. And it's it's such a eyesore. I can't even look at it. Like, just look at the gameplay. It's It genuinely hurts my eyes. The Fog was a very cool implementation that allowed you to not see the draw distance. And this was done on purpose. That way you don't see some of the limitations of the console. When you completely remove that away, you can see the horizon in the background of Grand Theft Auto 3 and it completely takes you out of the experience. What Grand Theft Auto lacked in let's say visual integrity and the way some of the characters look or even the, the gameplay, it really made up for it in style and look and this version just strips all of that completely. Another great example here in San Andreas, you could really see how beautiful the sun looks when it hits certain characters on the PS2, but when you take it on the trilogy, it just completely destroys any kind of atmosphere or style that the game was trying to portray. And this is inherently the problem that I have with these remasters. It just completely destroys everything. Oh shit. Here we go again. On Twitter, we, on Twitter, we've been just seeing these horrible, horrible models of these characters. And I, I will admit, Grand Theft Auto was never a game that was a looker. It was never a game that looked that good in terms of its character models. But this, com this completely deviates from anything that was remotely supposed to look like the characters. Let's take a look here at Tommy Versetti, and you're going to be see three different looks on the PS2 and on the trilogy. And the problem with that is that it completely deviates from the caricature art style that was presented in the original version. And I would very much argue that the PS2 tries its hardest to emulate this art style, but for some reason, this trilogy just completely looks nothing like its, its source material. I don't know who modeled this, and it, it, I'm still trying to figure out in words how to put this, because it's just, it, it, it completely takes me out of the experience. Holy sh man. I don't think they're modeled well at all. Some of the characters just look completely half-assed. They look very plastic. They look like they haven't been done at all. Looks like someone just, you know, did their first time in Blender and call it a day. It, it's, it's just really disgusting that we're talking about Grand Theft Auto. This is genuinely one of the greatest series that a lot of people love, and Rockstar made this and completely destroyed their own franchise. <laughs> it's, it's, it's ironic. The games actually look like Mafia Wars, which are trying to copy Grand Theft Auto's look, and now it looks like the complete opposite. I don't know why Rockstar took inspiration from that. It, it just completely bothers me. 33 tracks between all three games have been removed, and they have taken out <clears throat> Michael Jackson, Ozzy Osbourne and Gary Newman with cars. They've literally taken some of the best classics and completely removed them due to copyright. And I understand music licensing is a difficult thing, but Rockstar is infringing upon their copyrights. There are a couple data miners on Twitter that found out the original music is still embedded within these releases, meaning that Rockstar is infringing upon their copyrights. He's been looking real pleased with himself lately. You could go and check him out. I will. And I'll be seeing you around. They can get into a huge, huge problem with Sony, who is the current, you know, IP with uh, Michael Jackson music. Because of that, Rockstar actually pulled out these games from their Steam library, and it just makes no sense. People already purchased this, and they can't even play this on PC. <laughs> And if, if you can figure this out, please let me know. But in the audio section, there was an auto-tune. I don't know if this was a lazy implementation of a low-pass filter on the audio to just uh, stop a little bit of noise in the crackle, or maybe this is just to add an aesthetic to the radio. But there is an auto-tune that I've never seen before with no context. Please let me know if you know what that is. It really doesn't matter if you have a 3090, if you're running an Xbox One, if you're running a Switch. Performance is all over the place. On my Switch, at least, I've been having decent frame rates, but you have noticed when you're driving along, you're gonna be having a lot of chugging, and that's a significant problem. You just see complete stutters that just completely take you out of the experience. I don't know why they don't optimize this, but this most likely is due to Unreal 4 not being optimized on different platforms. And even people who have these high-end computers that can run Cyberpunk, uh, some of the latest games right now, and they have 3090s, 
can't run this game at 60 FPS. If that isn't an indication of how poorly optimized this game is, I don't know what is. Now you can argue that the original titles weren't really known for their frame rate or anything like that, but there is a true difference between hardware limitation that is really trying its best to pull it off, and hardware that can completely decimate in terms of performance, and yet has no untapped potential. And the problem is there are a lot of different bugs that were introduced in this. I don't really know if this is from the original or this one because both of them are kind of mixed together, but I will admit, I've had my fair share of bugs right here. I don't know that this is part of the original experience, but I think on top of that, you're gonna be seeing brand new bugs and even older bugs. And it's just a significant problem to see both of them mixed together. Rockstar is not doing anything to fix this. I will admit, gameplay is actually one of the biggest positives of this game, if there are any. There are a cool couple of life quality of features that I think are fantastic. One of my favorite ones actually is the weapon wheel. What's nice is that you hold the L trigger and you get to toggle any weapon from the weapon wheel. And this makes it great because you don't have to cycle through whatever weapons that you're trying to do. You can just get exactly what you need and go from there. Also driving what is great and it's completely welcome is a GPS navigation that allows that automatically guides you to your next destination. So if you're doing a mission for Luigi, for example, it guides you completely to the misty escort mission and allows you to drive back it was very very cool and i absolutely appreciate those kind of features i think an annoyance of the whole grand theft auto series is that when you fail a mission you have to go back to your contact point and talk to them in order to reinitiate the mission this one allows you to stop your game and completely restart and it's a nice touch because you don't have to actually go through the checkpoint you can cancel it and you can completely go on your way but having the option to go do your checkpoint is a fantastic feature. I think it's a great quality of life feature that they actually implemented. What's nice is that there are actually two new controller layouts, each with two profiles, and they're a classic that have the controller map out like the original PS2 or the Xbox. And this is great because if you're like me, who is so used to the original controls, you know, using X to drive, stuff like that, you'll be fine. But if you're used to Grand Theft Auto V and have never played the series, I think it has a nice modern control layout that you'll really appreciate as well. So it's nice that Rockstar has incorporated both the old Grand Theft Auto uh, fans as well as the new. And there isn't that much button remapping, so that's a huge unfortunate thing. They did actually allow a third person implementation that allows you to shoot whatever weapons, but it's kind of janky and it doesn't work that well. I notice even some of the animations when you're aiming or strafing just look completely off. It, it just makes no sense with the way like Tommy Versetti right here is navigating left and right. It just completely takes me out and I can see like his head bob and see the way he's navigating. It just looks atrocious, man. I know some people are gonna ask me how the game plays on the Switch undock and it actually plays decently. I do feel that performance is very close to dock mode, which is stupid to say, but you're going to be having Grand Theft Auto on the go. It plays fine. I, I think the whatever problems that you felt you saw on docked are still present in undocked, so unless Rockstar does a patch to fix these, you're not going to notice any improvement, which is sad to say. <sighs> I'm just really frustrated by this entire trilogy because there are people who are deathly in love with the Grand Theft Auto series and have grown up with it and just love this franchise. I don't know, it's a huge f***ing slap in the face to a lot of people. I think holding Rockstar and Gross Street Studios accountable for the laziness and work that they've done is something that needs to be done. However, keep this in mind, there could be a lot of internal reasons why. Maybe Rockstar is crunching Grove Studio to make this as quick as possible, and that's why a lot of quality of life features suffer, because they're being crunched. I No one really knows what's going on, but I still think that the work is lazy, it's rushed, it's horrible, and it does nothing to add value to anything Grand Theft Auto, and if anything, it takes so much away from the original experience. The second thing I have a problem is actually Rockstar's methods against fans. And back in September of 2021, Rockstar actually sued a couple of modders for porting Grand Theft Auto to the Switch and to the Vita, and I just think it's completely disgusting for punishing fans for trying to play a game that they love onto a different platform. They're not trying to sell it, they're not trying to profit off of it, they're just trying to do a simple pour. And to see that Rockstar is willing to do that, it's just disgusting. Mind you, it's biting them in their ass because they're gonna be going through a music lawsuit copyright because they they were too 
lazy to remove it from their original games. And the even bigger f you to fans is that Rockstar completely delisted any version of Grand Theft Auto. If you want to play the originals on Steam, if you want to play it on PSN and Xbox Store, good f***ing luck. You're not gonna be, you're not gonna find it anywhere. Rockstar delisted them from all of them, making this version the de facto and only available version to play this. So I would highly recommend finding this on some kind of interweb, finding this on your PS2 or, or the Xbox. If you can play this on original hardware, however you can, or even original PC, please do so because whatever Rockstar is doing is leaving such a huge and bad taste in my mouth. I think it's abhorrent. Not only that, but the game is hidden behind Rockstar's proprietary stupid DRM launcher that just takes up more memory than it really should. It's, I'm sorry, man. It, it, see, there's just so many negatives of this game that just leaves such a huge and sour taste in my mouth. It's just absolutely disgusting what Rockstar is doing to their employees, to themselves, to the fans, and to their customers. They just literally said F you to every individual. You know what, maybe you could think that I'm overreacting, but let me know in the comments what you think about this series, because I've been really trying to put this into words how disgusting this is and how it compares to the original, and it's just, it's it's annoying, man. I, I, I don't like what they're doing to this series. It, it sucks. I want to thank these people right here for supporting the Calpel channel, and if you want to see other videos that I've done in other port comparisons, you can check them out right here. Thank you guys. Let me know what your thoughts of the trilogy, how bad it is, or even if you're going to be playing it, but there you go. Don't play this. Bye.